The Very Large Array is one of the most sensitive radio receiving systems in the world. And to use a number here, it's 10 to the minus 26th watts per square meter per hertz. And when I tell that to a radar engineer, their jaws drop. The VLA is located here on the plains of San Agustin in west central New Mexico. This is about 7,000 feet elevation and it actually is an old lake bed. This was uh, a lake about six to 10,000 years ago. VLA was put here for a number of reasons. Uh, they wanted a place reasonably south in the U.S. so that you can see more of the sky. They wanted a high elevation to get away from water vapor and the dry climate also helped that. They wanted to be far from a major metropolitan area and all the radio interference that that would cause. And you look around here, you'll see all the mountains around that help shield us from radio interference, and that was a, a good thing. But they also wanted a good road nearby to bring supplies in and close to a, enough to a town, Socorro, where people could live, the people who work here. And so there were a number of considerations that they had for where to put the VLA. And this place is the one that won out. The VLA uses at any one time 27 antennas. They are 25 meters in diameter. They weigh 230 tons. We actually have 28 antennas so that we can have a routine maintenance cycle to give each one of those antennas a chance to go into our large building that we call the barn and get some major maintenance done on it. We put the VLA in four standard configurations and change the configuration roughly every four months. And we are in currently our B configuration, which is our second uh, widest configuration. A is the widest, B is next, and we go down to D, which is probably the picture you've all seen on TV and in magazines with all the antennas very close together. Each configuration offers astronomers a different level of resolving power or the ability to see fine detail. And we can go to very fine resolving power, which is like a, a zoom lens or a very wide angle lens in, in a sense. The idea of the Y is that it is three arms 120 degrees apart and as the Earth rotates, the orientation of this thing with respect to space changes. So in eight hours, one arm will have rotated around to the position where its neighbor was, and you will get a complete scan of the sky that way. Now with calibration and so on, the original idea was that it would take about 12 hours to make an image with the VLA. But because computing and algorithms and electronics have all advanced tremendously since then, it doesn't take anywhere near that time. We can look at a bright, uncomplicated source in just a few minutes. One of the beauties of the VLA is that it has been all the time a general purpose radio telescope, so it can contribute to almost any branch of astronomy. When I came on board here in 1992, the VLA was still relatively new. When it was dedicated in 1980, uh, it was a brand new facility that offered capabilities to researchers that you could not find anywhere else in the world. One of our astronomers once said that in those early days, you could point the thing at anything and find out something no one knew before. The VLA in its early days uh, made the connection between the inner part of a radio galaxy and the lobes out way out beyond it. Before the VLA, there were no images that showed the jets. The Very Large Array uh, discovered the very first uh, Einstein ring, a perfect alignment gravitational lens. Einstein himself said we would probably never see such a perfect alignment in the universe. The odds were too great, but some astronomers did with the VLA back in the 1980s. Some of the things that I've been involved with in, in doing press releases and publicity have been the very first detection of radio emission from a gamma ray burst, which helped us narrow down what those are uh, in one week between the VLA and optical and X-ray and gamma ray telescopes, obviously. We narrowed down the theories for what they are from 200 different theories to about two. The system aged, technology advanced, and we realized in the middle of the 1990s uh, that in fact we could do a lot better by bringing on board new technology that was being developed out there in the commercial sector. 
So about 2001, we started a new project, the VLA Upgrade Project, and we basically removed everything electronic from the system over a period of about 10 years, replaced it with all new technology, and made a brand new instrument. Once again, we had a brand new machine that did things nothing else in the world would do. In the 1920s, the hot technical topic was shortwave radio. And the telephone company thought, well, this would be a cost-effective way to carry telephone communications across the ocean rather than lay several thousand miles of, of cable under the ocean. You've got static and you've got crackling and you've got all this going on, and that's not good for telephone conversations. Bell Telephone Labs in New Jersey hired Carl Jansky, who was a young electrical engineer, and gave him the job of finding the location of this interference on shortwave radio. And so he built an antenna that was very highly directional, and it rolled around on Model T Ford wheels. And he found three sources of, of the noise. Local thunderstorms, distant thunderstorms, and then there was a third source that seemed to be coming from a particular location in the sky because it appeared four minutes earlier every day. That means it's something out there in the universe. It's not something on the, on the Earth. And it turns out what he was receiving was emission coming from the region near the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, our home galaxy. And so he was the first to discover uh, cosmic radio signals. And so he is considered to be the father of radio astronomy. When we were finishing this big upgrade project of the VLA in 2012, it was decided that it would be renamed the Carl G. Jansky Very Large Array. We're now looking forward to the next generation VLA, a system that will be 10 times more sensitive, 10 times greater resolution than the, v the current VLA. One set of technology will answer some questions, but then it will raise new questions. And so you bring in the newer technology and you address those newer questions and then the cycle continues.